Very happy to be with you this afternoon as we get into our final hour of live broadcasting from AEA this afternoon. And my guest for this next segment is Tony Grinberg. And Tony is with a company called Apero. Apario. Apario. I got, so I got close. Latin, it's Latin for to appear. Latin for, well, I learned yeah, something yeah, then today. Go. Thank yeah. you, Tony. I appreciate that. So you're a relatively new member of AEA. This is your first AEA convention. What brings you here this week? We are um, a, a little bit about Apario Systems. Uh, a company was founded in 2003. Uh, our owner and um, is a founder of the company. Uh, has been in entrepreneurial adventures his entire career. Uh, this is his fourth technology company. And um, we are an avionics um, manufacturer, design and manufacturing firm, as well as we have tools and avian er, products in the agricultural market with new innovation. And so we're here um, to continue to um, advance um, our division in aviation um, with the products we currently have, but more so to brand Apario as a company in the avionics field. Uh, products that we really can't talk about today or in development will be uh, coming out next year at AEA. Mm -hmm. So we're here, this is our second year, and we're here to kind of get a feel for, you know, you know, how people, you know, approach doing business with avionics shops mm -hmm. and um, like customers. And so it's been a great show for us. My first, even though it's our second, so I've learned a lot. Great. But you do have a couple of products we want to talk about. First of all, your Vision 1000 uh, flight data management uh, and monitoring uh, product. Tell us a little bit about that and what it does for the cockpit. Yeah, that's a, um, a product that went into development in 2006 in a partnership with Eurocopter out of Marignan, France. Mm -hmm. And the uh, purpose of the uh, product was to develop a very low cost, lightweight flight data monitoring device with video and audio. And that product um, was uh, launched into their uh, products in uh, Marignan Manufacturing Facility in France in 2009 on three of their specific aircraft. And so what the device does is captures the audio and the video of actions on the instrument panel behind the pilot and the co-pilot and then it brings that into a 3D visualization with a SD card into a computer and it tracks real-time movement of the aircraft. Uh, it's used for a liability tool if a, in case of an accident or you determine what happened by following the gauges or you have to see what, what you know, happened with the aircraft in flight. Uh, it also is used in training. Uh, we have our devices in two training schools in the United States. It's a great tool as a private pilot, you know, 25 some years ago. To have that tool today <laughs> oh, sure. after a flight lesson would be valuable to come back in and plug it into a computer and see exactly what you did right and what you did wrong and where you could improve. So that product has been on the market now for a number of years, and uh, we're, we're an OEM supplier to Airbus. Mm -hmm. uh, Eurocopter changed its name here last year to Airbus right. Helicopters. And so that product is continuing to make way in, in, in the OEM side, as well as the aftermarket with uh, current rotorcraft around the globe. Do you have any anybody lined up yet that you can talk about beyond the Airbus product? Uh, that continues to grow, that mm -hmm. market, and uh, some recent events that have happened at creating more, more awareness about flight data monitoring systems. And so we expect um, you know, the growth to continue there. FAA just announced a couple weeks ago that flight data monitoring devices are going to be required on all air ambulance helicopters mm -hmm. in the United States in the next four years. Uh, our device qualifies as one of those um, okay. options for customers, so that'll continue to be a growth area for us. Yeah. And then uh, two years ago, we started a partnership with Forflight, one of the mm -hmm. leading um, companies in electronic flight bags right. based in Texas, and Sporty's Pilot Shop. We developed the Stratus uh, portable ADS band device that overlays mm -hmm. weather and traffic on the iPad with four flight usage. Okay. And that product um, has been on the market now a couple of years and continues to go very well. Uh, Do you talk a little bit more about that product in, in detail? If, it's, if it overlays on the iPad, is it a Bluetooth compatible product? It's Wi-Fi. It brings it's in Wi-Fi wi compatibility mm -hmm. to, um, to the four flight through the iPad use. Right. And it allows for multiple devices as well. Uh, the, the second generation uh, Stratus has a backup AHARS. Mm -hmm. And so you can run your iPhone, if you will, and uh, download the free app, and you can have a backup attitude indicator as well as the iPad mini or the iPad where you're running traffic and weather with your foreflight. So it's, a, it's kind of a valuable tool. I want to come back to the, the Vision 1000 for just a moment. I, and is that a, a product that uh, a flight school could use like for fixed wing aircraft? Or just, That's correct. Yeah, right. we, uh, we are installing our devices in um, all the aircraft and flight training at the University of North Dakota in Grand mm -hmm. Forks. And uh, we have our product in the Piper aircraft in CAE in Arizona. Okay. And it uh, continues to be a tool used for training purposes. And, and uh, again, it's that, that information you can bring back and record and follow exactly what you did. If I could use a sports analogy, it's like the quarterback going back and looking at the game tape. Yeah, that would be a great analogy. Yes, <laughs> exactly. 
I want to talk with you a little bit because, and, and we've been discussing this with a lot of our guests here these last couple of days because the, the Part 23 rewrite has is, is been a big issue uh, and, and a big topic of conversation, I think, as we move through this certification process. How do you see that affecting the kinds of products that Apario brings to the market? Well, you know, that's an interesting question. You know, I, I serve on the General Aviation Manufacturers Board representing Apario, mm -hmm. and I've been very in tune with the, a lot of discussions about the, the complexity, the process, the um, uh, Region A in the country approaches things different than Region 2, and, you know, um, in, in presentations Secretary Herta has shared with us, you know, and the FAA Administrator, um, it, um, it's a slow process. You know, I think there will be some movement to make things a little better, mm -hmm. but I think from being a realist, um, you know, it's, gonna, it's not going to be a 180 degree change. But, you know, I think the challenges the FAA has with changes in, you know, retirements and personnel, uh, pressure by Congress and uh, their manufacturers that, um, you know, a lot of these technologies are coming to place now that don't need six months of testing. And certainly we need to be safety standards. But I think it's going to be baby steps that makes it easier for us to move through the process of certification. Um, I don't think we're going to have landscape change, um, you know, anytime soon, but I don't think it'll be baby steps, which, no. will, which, which at least gives a, you know, a sense of hope that, you know, the cost maybe will come down mm -hmm. and we get products to market faster and make the sky safer. We met the other night at a reception for the, um, the Next Gen ADSB yes. uh, fund that has been created to help pilots and aircraft owners uh, in, be compliant with the 2020 standard. Talk to us a little bit about that and your involvement with it and, and how you see that particular issue from the standpoint of a company that creates an ADSB compliant product. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, what I think competitive, the competitive landscape in avionics and the time horizon, another six years, you know, I think there's just under 200,000 aircraft in the United States in the general aviation field, mm -hmm. and somewhere around 160,000 of those aircraft are the old dial, round dial aircraft. You know, very, very few glass aircraft in the, you mm -hmm. know, in the current fleet across the nation. And I think, you know, the products are going to come in the next couple of years, and the price points um, will be what I think pilots and aircraft owners benefit by, by waiting to some point, maybe 2017, 2018. Um, this fund that we met at this, you know, reception will provide the financing tools, as I understand it, for those aircraft owners to uh, borrow the money to um, install those devices at very low interest rates. And, you know, there's been reports that these systems could be up to five figures. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that by competitive, competitive pressure and the competitive landscape. I think the products are going to be more in that three to five thousand dollar range to be ADSB compliant for guys like me who fly a Piper Warrior II 1979 vintage. Right. Um, not fifty thousand. Um, so we'll see. But I, I think that's what I see. So that that fund then will have that benefit to those owners to finance that over maybe five years or ten years. The, and there is a great deal of concern for people perhaps like yourself who think that their ADSB equipment might be worth more than the airplane they put in. I'm fortunate to be part of a club, <laughs> so we can spread that cost over a number of go. us. But the individual owners, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. you know, price is going to matter. And that's where that fund comes in to provide an option for those um, that want to pursue that and not write the check all at once. Well, great. Well, Tony, thanks very much for taking some time. We are out of time right now, but we'll look forward to seeing you next year Absolutely. when you've got some, some things up on the big board of the new product introductions. We'll look forward we'll to seeing there. what those are, and, and uh, I'm sure we'll have you back on and we'll talk about Super. those. Great. Thank you. Aero TV's coverage of the 57th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Nashville, Tennessee, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero.